there's a few things going on right now with YouTube. I'm going to try not to script this video. I'm going to just kind of say things as I go. Might say some dumb things. Might have to edit some of these things later. But basically, I want to talk about YouTube overall in terms of animators and animations. And I also want to talk about COPPA, C-O-P-P-A, specifically because I think pretty much everyone has been talking about COPPA at some extent recently. Um, a lot on YouTube especially because it mostly affects YouTube. But um, I'm going to go in and talk about some of the details and some of the challenges with being an animator on YouTube right now. So I'm going to talk about YouTube overall first. Um, and these are things that have been going on for a while. And this is just some basic stuff about how the algorithm works. Obviously, for some people, this won't be a problem, especially with more funding. But animation can be pretty difficult to make. It takes a very long time to set up, a very long time to animate, very expensive just in terms of time alone. Obviously, people have to eat and everything, and it takes a lot of time and energy and investment to make an animation. And YouTube, the way YouTube's system works right now is that it prioritizes videos by how often a channel is uploading and how long those videos are. And because animations take so much longer to produce than the average amount of content, basically you have it so that YouTube is kind of putting them below other content that's easier to make because they're like, oh, this person's not uploading as much. They don't have as much watch time because their videos are shorter. We'll, we'll kind of ignore that. Obviously, there's some exceptions. There are some channels that if they're specifically for that and they post a lot of different animation stuff, they usually get fine. But for freelance animators that are doing everything themselves, it is very difficult to keep up with the YouTube algorithm. And even more difficult to make money because of that. And that's part of why I've switched to Patreon because even though I don't really want to put myself behind a paywall, I've kind of gotten to the point where I have to because I don't have a job currently right now. I've been unemployed for a few months. I'm doing something this week to try to get a career, basically. And I mostly do YouTube for fun, but it is pretty much my only source of income right now. Um, and that's why I have to put a paywall here because I really can't afford to make content otherwise. Another issue with YouTube's current system is in terms of copyright. For animated videos, obviously it takes a whole lot of time to make, as I've said before. But with the demonetization, um, not so much um, demonetization based on content, but demonetization based on copyright is very common, where if you get any sort of claim on your video, whether or not it's a rational claim or not, they get all of the money. If you are a creator making a claim, you don't get any of the money, regardless of the validity of the claim. Your only option as a creator making a claim is to take the other video down. Whereas videos with the claims, the claimant can monetize the video. Even if the video has a completely original visual component, if there's an audio component in there, regardless of what percentage of the video is actually copyrighted, they will own the entire video. And I feel like the system would be a lot better if you could split that revenue where the audio copyright and the video copyright is put separately so that the video content, the audio can be monetized separately and so you won't lose rights to your own video by what other people decide they own or don't own. Now on to the more pressing matter. Phone, shut up. Now on to the more pressing matter of COPA. As most of you may know, COPA is a new law. Well, it's not a new law. The law was originally enacted in 1998 and put into place in, I believe, the year 2003, give or take. And it's basically a child protective act for the internet. And the current law, the way it is, is that it protects um, children online from getting their data used. So it's basically like ads that are targeted to kids is kind of like... That's one of the things that they're going to be changing with this next iteration of the law. But basically, it means that um, websites cannot take data from kids specifically. And there are laws against that. 
Now, the problem with that law, and now because it's being changed, this part of the law is not getting changed, what determines if content is directed for kids? Now, the regulations is what determines whether or not something's for kids. It's extremely vague, and it includes animated content as a whole, which, as you know, most things that are animated are not necessarily for kids. Kids might like things that are animated, but that doesn't mean that all animated things are for kids. Obviously, we have pretty much everything on Adult Swim, like Rick and Morty and Primal and all those other shows. Not for kids. There's a ton of other animated shows that are not for kids. There's also web series animations that are not for kids, like Has Been Hotel, which everyone has talked about, whether you like it or not. It's very popular, and it's not for kids. And the problem is... The vagueness of these new laws basically means that there's a very high risk that people could get fined very high quantities of money. Um, I believe the estimate, or at least what I've been hearing, is around 42000 per video that they think is breaking the law. And that kind of scares people. So... I'm going to go ahead and read something. This is specifically from COPA. This is the current version of COPA, so obviously this is going to be changed, and the law is set to be changed in 2020, but this is from what currently is here, and I'm going to go ahead and read this section. In determining whether a website or online service or a portion thereof is directed to children, the commission will consider its subject matter, visual content, use of animated characters, or child-oriented activities and incentives, music or other audio content, age of models, presence of child celebrities, celebrities who appeal to children, language or other characteristics of the website or online service, as well as whether advertising, promoting, or appearing on the website or online service is directed to children. There's a whole lot of things that just feel wrong there, especially the thing about quote-unquote animated, the thing about animated characters grouping that with child-oriented activities. I'm not sure what child-oriented activities means, and the fact that they're grouping that with animation as a whole just feels like kind of an insult to the art form. And then the other thing, child celebrities or celebrities who appeal to children. I kind of understand the child celebrities, but celebrities who appeal to children, that's like, okay, kids like you, you're banned from the internet now. I think, like, obviously that's probably not exactly what it means, but that just sounds completely ridiculous. It's n not necessarily your fault if you appeal to children. That's part of the huge issue that this law has. Like, why? And I'm gonna read you some stuff that I got. I believe this was from this Verge article that I got, um, and it's a few different things. Not all of this is from The Verge. I'm gonna go ahead and post a link to all the articles I'm using down in the description, but this is some general points that I got from these articles. YouTube will treat data from anyone watching children's content on YouTube as coming from a child, regardless of the age of the user. So that means if you're watching kid content, the algorithms, the data, everything, it's gonna assume that you're a kid which obviously is kind of weird because parents can watch that. Like, pretty much anyone can watch these videos, but they're gonna just pretend that you're a kid. YouTube will stop serving personalized ads, the content cont entirely. This is pretty similar to what Copa was already saying, and that's part of what YouTube got in trouble for, is the personalized ads, and Google as well. And this I don't find too much of a problem with. It's basically saying, like, hey, don't try to advertise to kids because obviously their parents are the ones who's going to be paying for whatever the kid wants, which is still kind of ridiculous, but it's not really directed to the content of the videos themselves. Creators will be required to tell YouTube when their content falls into the kids' content category. That's pretty much what we've already seen with the settings for channels and videos where it says, is this directed to kids or not? We've already kind of seen that. We kind of know what that is. There's been a lot of other videos talking about that. And the other thing that concerns me, the next point, the platform will use machine learning to find videos that clearly target young audiences. We already know that the bots and stuff on YouTube are not good, and this just basically gives the bots more power, which is concerning. Clearly target young audiences is another thing that's kind of iffy, because 
I don't know how they're going to be determining that, especially if they have weird laws like, oh, everything that's animated. And I've also been told that there's going to be difficulty in actually appealing these claims. Um, I don't know the details on that, but if it is something that's going to be hard to appeal, that's going to be another huge issue, and I don't think anyone really wants to deal with that. This is how you can determine whether or not your video is kid-friendly. What is the subject matter of your video? Whether children are your intended audience? Whether the video includes child actors or models? Whether the video includes characters, celebrities, or toys that appeal to children, including animated characters or cartoon figures? That's pretty much what I already went over about how they consider animation to be kind of grouped with this whole other thing, which again is kind of a problem. Whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand, I don't really know what that means. I feel like that might even be a threat to like videos for people learning new languages because obviously the language is going to be much more simplified. And just the general thing, the quote unquote appealing to children. There's so many things that can appeal to children and so many things that won't appeal to children. I think that's such a huge thing where not only is it vague, but it's also kind of like a personal call. Like, for me, as a kid, literally every animal in existence was something that appealed to me. I don't think it really makes sense to just ban animals from the platform. Maybe there's a kid who really likes princesses. Maybe there's a kid who really likes the police. I don't know. But you can't really judge that because that's such a personal preference type thing, not only for the kid, but for the reviewer. And I don't really know how they're going to try to enforce this. If you guys want to know some of the background here, basically there are a lot of child advocacy groups, primarily one called Common Sense, that wanted to regulate how much of certain things kids were getting access to on the internet. Now the thing is, Common Sense's job is to rate whether or not something is child friendly or not. They're basically, instead of doing their job, they're basically saying, hey, anything that's child friendly has to go under all these regulations because we don't really feel like doing our rating system anymore. We just want to regulate the entire internet. Common Sense has even said that they think the guidelines that they're going to be putting out are not strict enough. So I don't know why they feel like they need to be this controlling. The rules that they're going to be changing are way too controlling in my opinion and I think most people agree with that. Here's some other data that I also got from looking through things. Child-directed videos, or ones that have been labeled or selected to be child content or directed towards kids or with a target audience of children, they will not have a comment section, they will not have click-through info cards, they will not have end screens, notification functions, or anything related to the community tab. This also means that most child videos will not be monetizable, which again, we don't know what exactly that means in terms of what is determined to be a child-directed video. And like I said before, it sounds like creators won't really be able to directly appeal these claims. That being said, there are some things that can be done about it. Obviously, I'm going to put some links in the description that go into more detail, and I highly recommend that you read much more into this. Because the law hasn't been officially rewritten yet, all I can find online about the law is the 2013 version, and this is set to be put into effect, like, officially on January 1st, 2020. So, the good thing, though, is there is a way that you can tell the government that this is a problem. I'm going to go ahead and put a link into the description. All you have to do is fill out the form there, and I highly recommend you look into it a little bit more if you want to get your own information and if you want to tell them what you think personally. I think that's perfect. I don't believe you have to be from the U.S. to do this. You can do this regardless where you are, especially because it affects everyone, even if you're not in the U.S. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that in the description. Just put in a comment. It might require your name, but I think there is a way to make it anonymous. There's already about, I think, 6,000 um, comments on there, so obviously people are using this system to tell them that they don't appreciate this law. This is definitely an issue. It definitely affects animators unfairly, and I think I really hope that we can make sure that this does not affect animation because it's already very difficult as it is to be an animator on YouTube, and this law just makes it worse. So. If you guys can look into all of this information, make your own judgments, tell everyone how you feel. Um, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to talk to you guys soon.